hi and welcome to my channel so i'm going to be talking about a really simple thing today is the uk still recruiting overseas workers and indeed will they continue recruiting overseas workers this is something that i get at least a hundred emails per day in my inbox saying melvis i so want to come to the uk this is my dream country i've been trying for x amount of time but i'm really worried about what i'm seeing on youtube about everything that i'm hearing from different people are they still recruiting Look, if you're new to my channel, you're welcome. If you are a returning subscriber, I appreciate your time. And this is what we're going to talk about in today's video. And so that you just know, if you're really keen on moving to the UK or you're in the UK looking for visa sponsorship, what should you focus on? And what is really the state of recruitment when it comes to overseas workers in the UK, whether carers, nurses, teachers, midwives, or just anybody for that matter. So if you haven't joined this family, Take this opportunity to hit the subscribe button below because you want to be the first person that is notified every single day when I drop a new video on here at 10 a.m. prompts UK time. Yes, I am dedicated to making sure that you're the first person that is informed because I'm very passionate about all of this. I started my own UK journey as a carer a few years ago and I've now progressed as an advanced nurse practitioner, which is the most senior clinical nursing job that there is in the profession. So... Coming to this country, the only reason I came to the UK was because of career progression. I was like, what is the most senior job in nursing? And I was like, hey, advanced nurse practitioner. I looked at different countries. They had them in the US. They had them in the UK. And so I had to decide between the UK and the US. Very difficult decision. So many of us go through this. I'm sharing this because you're not alone. If you're worrying about this, some of us, we've all gone through that journey. It's just that we are at different stages of our journeys. And that's why sometimes when you look at people, everybody is not at the same state. You know, everybody's not going to achieve everything at the same time. Your journey is legit. Take your time. No rush. Don't listen to negativity. Look at information that is going to propel you to really achieve what it is that you want to achieve rather than the things that are going to discourage you from moving forward because it is not worth it so again by the way if you're not aware do have a free newsletter in the comment section below where i share information such as this directly to your inbox visa sponsorship opportunities in the uk career progression pathways apprenticeships nhs jobs whether you're looking for clinical non-clinical you're on a student visa you're looking to switch you're looking to i share information about all of that so like I said, it's free to join. You, it won't take you 10 seconds to join um, and you get that info directly to your inbox. Also, you're going to see my contact details on there. There's my WhatsApp number as well as my email address. And if you need to contact me to talk about your specific circumstances, then obviously you're welcome to do so because, I mean, I don't mind at all. And so, like I was saying before, all of us have gone through that journey and I was thinking, between the UK, the US and all of that. And I eventually, I was like, I've always been drawn to the UK anyway. So, I mean, I've, I'm a UK girl. Um, and I know there are many other people that like me for, there are many reasons why I prefer the UK to the US. These are all personal reasons. I wouldn't get into them here. But if you want to move to the UK, you know the reasons why. And by the way, Leave a comment in the comment section below. What is your, what's your dream country to go to? What is your ideal country to go to? Leave that in the comment section and obviously why. Because for me, when I looked at that, and which means that career progression was the only reason I came to the UK. I didn't come to the UK for any other reason. And that's why I am very unapologetic about my progression. I'm sharing this with you. Because so many of us put in so much effort to get to this country. We have sleepless nights trying to get to the UK. Some people even sell everything that they have, their property and all of that to get to the UK to then become demoralized once they get here. It's even worse for those people that have done all of that to then come and find out that actually there is no job at all for them to do. I really do empathize with your situation. And what I'll say is don't be discouraged. You know, this is not for people that are already here and we're going to move on to the sponsorship thing because it's just something that has come to my mind, you know, and I'm like, hey, I need to talk about it, obviously, while I remember. So if you're in the UK, it doesn't matter the situation that you're going through. It's tough. It's challenging in this country. Very difficult. Everybody's busy. Nobody's got time. But be motivated. Keep going. It's going to feel as though you're not really making any effort. But guess what? Or you're not making any progress. But over time, that's going to compound. It's like that compound in interest is going to compound over time and you're going to see the result. 
Like I say, that's a journey that we've all gone through. Because now when I sit here and say, oh, I'm an advanced nurse practitioner and this and that, look, I didn't start like this. I started as a carer from zero, going up, studying nursing. I've gone through a lot to get to this position. So like I say, we are all at different journeys and that's okay. Appreciate your journey and take the time that you need. If you're already in the UK, it's going to be challenging, but it is okay. You're going to get out of it. So that's it for people that are already here and all of that. But then what about the visa sponsorship saga? Look, people are talking about here. What about the elections? This The UK cannot survive without you and I, overseas workers. They can't. And that's why personally, when people are worrying about visa sponsorship, are they going to carry on recruiting? Are they not? I never get concerned about any of this because when you're in this country and you understand the system and you see how things are, you just sit and you think this country cannot survive a day without overseas workers. A day, it will not survive. I'm telling you this because if you're here, you know, because there, are, there are even like hospitals, there are, there are wards that I get into and every single person is an overseas worker from the surgeons to the consultants, to the nurses, to the cleaners, to the carers, every single person. In fact, about um, a while ago, not long ago, I had a patient say to me at work, when I come to the hospital now, it feels as if I'm in Africa. A patient said that to me and he was like, where are all the British workers? I was like, welcome <laughs> i mean we just we just talked about it i was like yeah it's okay there's lots of overseas workers because of staffing issues i mean i tried to explain all of that to him but that's what is happening so please don't be concerned i mean sometimes i don't want to say sometimes all the times on youtube bad news always gets more attention and i think this is the problem so bad news bad headlines negativity grabs a lot of attention if you're talking sense you're talking about positive things that are going on you're talking about how people can improve themselves let me tell you many people are not really interested that's the reality of it that's society but if you're talking about something really negative and all of that then you're going to grab a lot of attention and i think that attention grabbing thing is what really attracts a lot of people towards negative news which then seems as though the uk is crumbling nobody wants overseas workers look let me tell you this country cannot survive without overseas workers and currently the office for national statistics has said that the uk urgently needs two million extra workers in fact the department for work and pensions in the UK has implemented lots of new positions just to try and get people to work because according to the data there are six to eight million people in the UK of working age that just decide they don't want to be working and they're just at home for various reasons and so they're trying to get them back to work and that's why there is reliance in fact over reliance on the overseas workers this is never ever going to end I tell you because it's a cultural thing. It's something that they just cannot survive without. That's why I give an example of hospitals. If you walk into a hospital and every single person is an overseas worker, if you got rid of those people, what do you think will happen? Even with my job, for example, there are very few people in the UK that are qualified, you know, as, you know, advanced nurse practitioners. So when I do my job, I know that I'm wanted, I'm needed. I do it with pride. I do it with enthusiasm. And I know that I do not have to apologize when it comes to career progression. So please, if you're overseas planning to get to the UK, I'm telling you now, focus on what matters. Focus on the things that are going to add to your enthusiasm. Look at the advantages when you're in this country and you've progressed and you're in a senior position. You're managing, you're leading, you're earning good money. You know, you've got the health care, you've got your kids settled. I mean, those are the things I need to look out for. Even for myself, there are lots of negative things that go on, but I always try to take the positive so that I focus on all that because I don't have time for negativity. You know, I just don't have the time. And that's why sometimes people keep asking me, Melvis, are they still recruiting? Are they still recruiting? And the same person asks over and over. I'm just like, please, let me just calm down, take a deep breath, be polite and show empathy because overseas recruitment is never ever going to end. I tell you this out of experience because as you recruit one staff, one person's leaving. As you recruit one, it's like nurses, for example. You know, I remember when I came to the UK, the UK was short of about 50,000 nurses. Every year they are recruiting about 50,000 nurses. The numbers are increasing every year, but currently the vacancies are just over 50,000 at the moment. So 
it's endless. It's an endless vicious circle. So if you're looking for jobs, focus on the opportunities. There is something for all of us. And when you get to the UK, please do not despair. Remember the things that got you to this country. Focus on the positivity. That's what I'm saying. Because you're going to reap the reward in the end. It's going to take time. I mean, it's taking time for all of us, but you will get there. So again, what do you think about this? This is more like just a general video, just talking and sharing, you know, ideas like two friends. I hope that this helps somebody. Like I say, my videos are just for less than 1% of people here. People that really understand, you know, what this is about. People that are focused, people that are looking long-term rather than just now. So I hope you found this helpful. Like I said, um, if you need to contact me, check the comment section below. You see my contact details. Share this with anybody that can benefit from this and check out. I've done lots of videos here about different opportunities in the UK and check this out.